Steve, coding is hard. I just need to get some edge, get some perspective. I'm just going to break it down to you. Coding is not hard. It's not. It's not. You're just not thinking hard enough. You better watch out if your enemies are road ahead of full prophecy to be the greatest beast the world has ever seen. I feed him every day with the bones clean. Up. Hey devs, what's good? This is Steve Nyanumba and welcome back to the channel today. I am going to share with you today, all right? Five Laravel tips that you can drastically use to boost your productivity inside code. So whether you're a beginner or you have been uh, using Laravel for a while, please go ahead and save these tips within your arsenal, right? Because uh, these are going to save time. These are going to save your time for your coding experience. You're going to uh, make these experiences a bit more smoother. And uh, for that, I'm going to be using my personal portfolio to actually demonstrate all these different things that you can do uh, so that you can be able to make your productivity much faster. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, let's move into these top five Laravel tips to boost your productivity. Let's go. First off, let's talk about something that uh, every Laravel developer just is, you just need to know that you're gonna run into this problem. And this thing is going to be called the N plus one problem. So you need to use uh, eager loading, right? Eager loading is the, the, the whole N plus one problem eradication. Uh, that's what I call it, the N plus one problem eradication. Uh, but most people will know it as using eager loading, right? So this is this happens, um, how can I explain it? When your code is running more database queries than it actually should, and uh, that generally just slows things down. So if you look at like an example of uh, where you're trying to retrieve posts, for example, in my situation uh, right here, let's actually go into our portfolios and we go into our index, right? If we look at this situation over here, we are retrieving our portfolios and these portfolios have the portfolio category, right? So this is where we run into this small bit of the N plus one problem where our time complexity is now much greater in terms of retrieving uh, the portfolio together with the categories that are issued with them, right? So if you're retrieving, like say something like in your situation, maybe it's posts, right? And you need to, um, you know, load comments as well as posts. And then you might be making like a separate database query for like each of these different posts. And I think that's a huge waste, waste of time, waste of resources. So this is how you're going to sort this out, right? Eager loading is when you use uh, this thing called the with function, right? This with function, I'm going to come in here and uh, declare the relations. So I'm going to come in here and just say categories or category, right? Because that's the relation that is within our, my portfolio list. And I'm just going to come in here and say get. So inside portfolio, right, I have this function over here called category. This category uh, retrieves the portfolio categories using the foreign key portfolio category ID and then, you know, sends it back to uh, this query right here and gives us the JSON format together with this portfolio category. I wish I could test it for you so that you can be able to see it uh, firsthand, but that's how it works. In general, instead of looping them separately with a separate database query all at once, it gets everything all at once. You load everything all at once. It not only reduces the number of queries, but also speeds up your application. And I think you should always keep an eye on these kinds of queries, especially in, um, in production. Right. So we're going to talk about uh, the second tip over here, which is route caching for faster route loading and all that stuff. So uh, there's a command I, l I don't normally use, especially when I'm dealing with items in development, and that is uh, PHP artisan route cache. So this command right here, and if I was to just zoom in, so that we can be able to look at it properly. So this command right here is the command of, um, you know, caching all the routes into a more uh, compressed or more passed file that 
loads much faster than the normal routes file and uh, it generally enables all the routes to be loaded much faster. So, um, you know, if we have lots of routes, let's say, for example, right, if you have many, many routes, um, and I'm going to just give an example of, like, let's say my routes list on this particular app, compare it with now maybe the routes list on another app that I developed some time back. So this is the routes list, and you can see I, ha I have relatively quite a number of routes. What happens in this situation when I use this a PHP Artisan route cache is it will cache the routes. I don't know where these routes are, but it caches those routes so that it can actually use those routes the way they are and it loads them a bit much uh, faster. If you want actually now that we're talking about the route uh, caching situation, if you want to change these routes, the first thing that you have to do is you go ahead and do the cache clear or rather route clear. And this command is what now generally now enables you to uh, get back your routes uh, to where they were before. Tip number three, using factories and seeders for testing. Okay. Now, factories and seeders do quite a lot of work, honestly. Uh, and it's a huge time saver when testing for developing or developing features. Um, so I think instead of manually creating data for testing, Laravel's factories and seeders make it so easy to generate dummy data. I'm just going to show you one example of when we uh, generated seeders inside our live stream. And uh, if we look at these seeders, you can look at now, like say for example, the education seeder. And uh, I think you can also go ahead and use a little bit of uh, chat GPT. If you go into our past live streams, you will see a clip of us using chat GPT to create or to actually go ahead and uh, generate some of this uh, system stuff. It worked like a charm. It worked like a charm. It's gonna work for you. Uh, go ahead and use seeders as much as you can. So this is just examples. I'm just going to show you a clip or a snippet of us doing that in a live stream so that you cannot get lost. And uh, you can also go ahead and check out that live stream as well. All right. So we won't waste time with this at this point. Once we get there, we are good. So that's tip number three. Tip number four, I'm going to talk about how uh, blade components are uh, you know, blade components are used for cleaner views. So if you're tired of repeating the same HTML code in different avenues, then blade components are a great way to keep your views clean and dry. And this is what I mean by this. So let's just go back to our resources, uh, views, and then we go into our layouts app, okay? For example, you see, this is generally our structure for the back side of the application. If I go ahead and open my testing side over here, we can definitely see, of course, I need to open my herd. All right, so if we come, ba come back down here and look at our app.blade.php and look at what is running over here, we can see there's a preloader, there's a nav bar, nav links, and all those different things. Uh, which I don't have to repeat on other pages. And the reason why I don't have to repeat on other pages is because this is generally being used as a layout, a layout for uh, covering for these different sections, right? We have the navigation bar. We have this other navigation levels. We have our sidebar uh, navigation. And now, because we've already had this code, if we go into our page, for like, let's say, for example, our dashboard. Our dashboard is loading inside our admin section without any code whatsoever, right? And all I just probably need to do to populate, right, is like, let's say, for example, I do x slot colon header so that I can be able to put in uh, stuff within the header that is being declared within our app layout over here. So if I come in and look at our header, our header is actually uh, somewhere here, actually. Um, 
in our content. So you can see we have our head over here, which uh, if it's not there, then we just leave it as a blank space. And then we also have it in a breadcrumb right here, right? So if we look at the page itself, you can see the breadcrumb is over here, dashboard, and then there's nothing written there. So if we come back here and just come into our dashboard, and then you see in this part for X slot colon header, all you just need to do here is write dashboard. And once I do that, if I come in here and reload, then this is populated, this is populated. And all I just really need to do, all I just really needed to, needed to do is put this there. And then also on top of that, I don't need any other HTML tags, right? I can just go ahead and, uh, you know, because I'm using Bootstrap, I can just come in here and declare a card, or I can come in here and declare or I, just can, I can come in here and declare a row, and then I can split it into like, let's say maybe columns, so column uh, md8 uh, dot column 12. And then I multiply this by two, like so. And then maybe in the second one, I could do like maybe say a column md4, and column 12 so because all of them are supposed to fill in uh four rows and then uh 12 rows sorry and then uh i just come and do a card and then i just do a normal card right so i come i can come in here and do a card with a background uh bg maybe say dark and then the holder i leave it uh, sep uh, separate from the source title and text and then this one here in column md4 i can just do maybe say uh column md3 times four right so i can just do uh, dot row down here column md3 times four and then inside each of these so i'm just going to come in and select for each of those i could do the same card right so I'll just come in here, do shift alt, not shift alt, sorry, but control, is it control shift? Control alt. And then now do the same card maybe as that one. So I'll just do a card and uh, just align it like that at the moment, just like that. So if I refresh this, all that code has just created all this. Okay, make makes sense. All this has just been created just from like being there out of nothing, absolutely nothing, right? And the reason why that is is because it's always going to take up after this theme and also slot in the code that I've created within here so that it can just line up together with everything here. So I don't have to repeat the code. I don't have to repeat my footers. I don't have to repeat my heading tags. I don't have to repeat anything. That's what you just need to increase the number of time, increase the, 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 the speed uh, in developing this particular features and all, those, all that stuff. And now you can reuse this like, like let's say for example, if I came in and uh, now I have this app layout, I can reuse it in any different situation whenever I can. I can use this front layout whenever I can. I can use this guest layout for my login and logout whenever I can. I can change this layout and it changes the entirety of the landscape. So whether it be on the uh, register, whether it be on the login, whether it be on the two-factor authentication page, it just changes everything in accordance to that. And then again, if I come in and look at my my navigation bar and all that stuff there's something that i actually created for me to be able to use and this is these components so using components in blade is very seamless especially when you're having uh, recurring uh, situations of like let's say list tags and uh, drop down lists and all that stuff so in my situation what i did is i used this the the list tags that were found in admin LTE, put them in here, try to make a theme out of it, and the only things that I'm putting is the name of the component, and then adding the attributes into that list, into that component, and uh, 
these are this could be anything this could be attributes like route over here like what i have here i have route i have title i have the fa icon which is the font awesome icon and then i have it as active false active true active false whatever right so in such situations i would uh, you know i would definitely advise that using components you should use them as much as possible and components, you know, they don't, they not only make your code cleaner, but they also make it easier to maintain, it, especially when your app now starts becoming a huge monster. It, when it grows, you have to be able to maintain it much better. And I just imagine that this sidebar navigation is not going to be the last I'm going to see of it. I'm going to definitely add more links as the, this app continues growing. And now we're finally at uh, tip number five which is artisan commands for automation. So here's the thing. Um, you probably know that artisan, uh, you know artisan as the command line tool, right, when it comes to Laravel. But I don't think you guys understood the idea of creating your own commands. Most people usually see me on stream doing things like PA. And that's actually PHP artisan. PAMFS, PHP artisan migrate fresh seed right? We, we have things like that. that. Those are custom commands that I implemented in Bash, and I'm going to show you how to do that as well, but then you can also make your own artisan commands. And the reason, the reason why I'm talking about artisan commands in particular is because PA, PHP artisan, is the general perspective of the whole landscape of Laravel programming, okay? So let me, let me give you an example, right? Let's say, for, let's say we go to PHP Artisan, and then we have this section called Make, okay? There's one that many people have overlooked over here. PHP Artisan Make Command, which accepts you to create a new Artisan command, okay? So I'm going to do an example, right? I'm going to do an example of uh, maybe sending reports, right? So I'm going to just do PHP Artisan Make Command, send reports okay i've made the command now it's a console command and it's going to be found uh i think where it should be found inside um i think i've made it somewhere here console yeah commands send report right here okay and now we have um a whole systematic situation over here. So we have the description, the command description. We have the signature, app send reports. You can see that. And then we, we have different things that we can set up, right? But just to point out an example of how you can call these commands, you can always go ahead and check the example that has been posed for you inside the routes console, right? This is a, a, a situation that uh, is also there. Uh, like let's say for example, if we come in here and say uh, this signature is this signature is uh, inspire. So this artisan command now exists. So the purpose over here is to display an inspiring quote and then it does it hourly. So now if I come in here and did this artisan command, right? Like let's say P PHP artisan uh, inspire. I come in here and then it comes here. Waste no more time arguing what a good man should be. Be one, Marcus Aurelius. That's one, all right? That's, there's another one. I have not failed. I have just found a thousand ways that won't work. So this is just one example of commands that could, uh, could be running. You could run the same, same uh, situation uh, and put it down inside the artisan console and all that stuff. So I could come in here and say, uh, maybe say this, uh, you know, command or this comment something like that and then I'll come in and say this works um, then once that happens I'll come in here and do that stuff apps and reports and it comes and comments this works so that's generally how I would deal with everything that is to do with Laravel custom commands, custom uh, components for Blade, uh, and 
in conclusion, I think uh, these five tips will help you be a lot more productive in Laravel. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. From eager loading to custom artisan commands, um, I think these tips sure, are sure to save you uh, and save your time to definitely make your life a little bit more easier when it comes to development. And uh, I think, yeah, I think I've, I've run through the most basic of things that needed to be talked about. So if you guys found this video helpful, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And please don't forget to hit the bell icon because uh, more tips are coming, more tips that will help you will come definitely. And also, please drop a comment below if you have any other productivity tools that you guys like to, like to use that I didn't mention. And uh, I mean, we all love to learn. So until next time, ladies and gentlemen, as you continue learning and as you continue progressing with this channel and with your, within your own means, uh, I would like to bid you all a farewell and happy coding. So ladies and gentlemen, Thank you for tuning in and thank you for watching and God bless.